Good day, Earth Science students. Welcome to Video Lecture Episode 21. Today we're going to continue talking about missions to the moon. Remember last time we were together, we talked about impact basins, and in particular, we ended with an area within uh, a particular impact basin where there was a large plateau that always received sunlight. And scientists speculate that they could use that in the future if they were to build a colony there because they could uh, take advantage of that sunlight hitting there and uh, generate solar energy that way. Well, let's move to slide 138 and let's start talking about mapping the moon. Well, a large part of Clementine's mission included taking high-resolution photographs so a detailed map of the moon's surface could be compiled. Remember, Clementine was that satellite that they sent out that we began talking about near the end of our lecture last time. Now, because the five cameras mounted on Clementine were able to resolve features as small as 200 meters across, human knowledge of the moon's surface greatly increased, which is a good thing. Now, one image resulting from the other Clementine data was shown in your textbook, but I think I have some similar images on the previous slide on slide 138. It shows that the crust on the side of the moon that faces Earth is much thinner than the crust on the far side, so they found out that one side was thicker than the other in regards to the crust area. Now additional information shows that the moon's crust is thinnest under impact basins, which I think we would all expect that, at least with the knowledge that we know of, that if there's a spot where these asteroids and craters are going to be formed as a result, then obviously those are going to be thinner areas just because of what's been taken out from, those, from the impact of those large objects. Now, based on analysis of the light data received from Clementine, a global map of the moon also was created that shows its composition. Now, I do have a picture of that. I believe there is a, at least one type of picture on slides 139, 140, and I know I have some coming up, so just keep in mind when you're looking through the slides, all right? Now, let's talk about something else in connecting with mapping the moon, and let's talk about this other uh, satellite we sent out. So, due to the success of Clementine, and thankfully it was relatively low cost, it opened the door for further moon missions. In 1998, NASA launched what they called the Lunar Prospector, which was a desk-sized uh, lunar orbit, to collect more information about the lunar surface. Now, if you look on slide 141, I have a picture of what that orbiter would look like. I think it's a computer model, if I remember correctly. Now, the spacecraft, that being the Lunar Prospector, spent a year orbiting the moon from pole to pole once every two hours. The resulting maps confirm Clementine's data. In other words, the data they got from the previous uh, orbiter uh, spacecraft, that information was confirmed with this one that was able to obviously spend more time and had a little bit different perspective and just confirmed what we already had learned, which is really cool. Now, the Lunar Prospector was scheduled to conduct a detailed study of the moon from 100 kilometers above the surface and to look for clues about its origin and makeup. All right. Now, let's talk about the icy poles of the moon itself. Early data from, lunar, from the Lunar Prospector indicated hydrogen is present in crater rocks at the moon's poles. Now, if you don't know what hydrogen is, hydrogen is the first element on the periodic table, and it's the one of two elements that make up water, water obviously being H2O. If you look at slide 144, I have some images representing hydrogen. Now, this information referring to the amount of uh, indicating a hydrogen was present in crater rocks at moon's poles, that information combined with data from Clementine has led scientists to hypothesize that ice may actually exist in the floors of craters at both moon poles. These deep craters are cold, because keep in mind, sunlight never reaches their floors because they're so deep and the sun never reaches there. Temperatures there are as low as negative 233 degrees Celsius. They are definitely cold enough to have preserved any ice that may have collected from colliding comets. Think about it. Negative 233 degrees Celsius? That is cold. <sighs> Scientists, in fact, estimate that 6 billion tons of ice might lie buried under 40 centimeters of crushed rock at the moon's poles. When the Lunar Prospector mission ended in July of 1999, it still was unknown whether the hydrogen was from water on the moon or some other source such as solar winds. NASA made a decision. They decided to crash the spacecraft into a crater at the moon's south pole that might contain ice. The scientists hoped that in doing so, the crash would release large quantities of water vapor that might be detected with special telescopes on Earth. The chance of this experiment working was considered slight, and the results were, unfortunately, inconclusive. Water might exist on the moon, but additional research will be needed before definite conclusions can be drawn. However, data from the Lunar Prospector have enabled scientists to confirm that the moon has a small, iron-rich core about 600 kilometers in diameter. The fact that the moon has such a small core has some scientists thinking, it's, thinking that that supports 
the impact theory of its origin because only small amounts of iron would have blasted off from the Earth. Most of Earth's iron would have remained deep in the planet's interior. So they're thinking, hey, based on our information, maybe this other theory works. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our discussion in chapter 23, chapter 23, section 3, in particular, chapter 23, dealing with the sun, earth, moon systems. I do hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, you can leave that in the comments below. Reach out, send me an email message. Have a nice day. I do hope this has been helpful. Take care. Goodbye.